So as part of module four, we're gonna talk more specifically about intelligent transportation systems and actually what does that mean and what does it mean from an impact on the energy use and the emissions. We typically divide these up into three areas. One deals with technology that goes on the vehicle, other technologies that are more of a systems approach, and then lastly, one that's based on traveler behavior. So let's talk about vehicles first. Uh, we've seen in today's cars that they're getting more and more intelligent every single day. You buy a car today and you have many different options, things such as cruise control, uh, lane departure warning, things like that. Those are all part of intelligent transportation system technology where we're doing it for, again, safety reasons, sometimes mobility reasons, but a lot of that technology has a lot to do with how much energy we use and how much emissions we produce. So there's things such as the longitudinal control. Again, cruise control is a very good example of that, and they're making better and better cruise controls where even we have uh, collision warning now, and if we can avoid a collision, that's certainly a big benefit by not producing the emissions and energy use that we have when we have an accident and a lot of congestion behind that. Uh, and then other techniques that allow cars to talk to each other to do better in terms of adapting to different speeds. Uh, if we look at the system effects, those are more what can we do from an infrastructure point of view in order to, uh, again, make things safer, make mobility uh, uh, better, and certainly how do we reduce the amount of energy and emissions. Um, so the typical thing there are when we monitor all of our traffic, understand where the congestion is, and then do something about it in terms of uh, maybe uh, you know, longer term planning for new lanes, uh, new places to put in these new ITS techniques, but maybe at a more simple level, we're talking about traffic lights, how to improve traffic light timing and things like that, and then other things such as when we jump onto our freeways, how do we do better ramp meter control, things that really smooth out the traffic flow. So that's more of a system approach. And then lastly is behavior. Uh, we've seen this mainly on vehicles with guidance, right? We have our our GPS navigation systems, and really that's been a big benefit in terms of providing better route guidance uh, where people can drive more efficiently from point A to point B, and there's been a lot of improvement in that just in the last decade or so. We're also providing better in-route driver information, things like smart parking, where we know where we can go to get parking, we don't have to search around for it, uh, better connections to transit and other modes, uh, and then pricing is part of this too, where we have toll lanes and we have this very efficient electronic payment service system. All those things uh, affect traveler behavior. And again, you can uh, look at the specific energy and emissions reductions based on that type of technology. One thing I want to go into a little bit more detail is this whole revolution of connected vehicles. So just like we have our laptop computers and other things that have this wireless communication capability, Vehicles now are starting to get the same capability, and it's going beyond just simply having a smartphone with cellular service. It's putting in specific radios into vehicles so that they can broadcast information about where they are, what they're going to do, so that other vehicles can listen to that and avoid accidents. So that's the main reason that we want vehicles talking to vehicles. But then it's also possible for vehicles to talk to the infrastructure. You can have traffic lights talking to cars, cars talking back to the traffic lights, and those are all mechanisms on how to improve uh, the efficient flow of traffic. And then, of course, you have a set of environmental applications using connected vehicles that can really uh, make some significant improvements. This is a very busy slide, but it shows you uh, over a hundred different type of applications of what you can do with this type of connectivity. A lot of it has to do with safety, a lot of it has to do with mobility there on the right, but certainly the ones in the middle of things that we've studied for some time about what can we do if we improve traffic signal timing? What can we do if we have this communication between traffic lights and cars? And we've studied that and we've quantified how much energy and how much greenhouse gas emissions we can uh, reduce. This is a slide that just shows, you know, if you look at some of these uh, eco-traffic signal operations, uh, in many different scenarios, we can uh, save overall traffic-wise 10 to 15, sometimes 20 percent in terms of energy savings. Um, that's through uh, signal timing, traffic signal priority techniques, and then this new concept which we'll talk about, which is an eco approach and departure at traffic signals. But there's also things we can do on our lanes and other things that we can do within different zones within the city. 
if you look at this eco approach and departure at signalized intersections, the concept is very simple and humans are already doing this where we try to anticipate the light turning from green to red and red to green and by either speeding up or slowing down slightly in order so that we can go through that green in a smoother fashion. So if we have that communication between traffic lights and cars, we can do our speed adjustments a little bit more efficiently and have a larger number of vehicles get through on a green light. Uh, a simple simulation of that is shown here where typical traffic pulling up to a traffic light is shown on top and below you can see the vehicles can sometimes slow down a little bit, approach the light, still keep moving, but then you get a little bit better flow and certainly a lot better uh, energy, uh, lower energy use and lower emissions. So other examples, and we won't go into too much detail, but traffic signal timing applications, this can be greatly improved somewhere around five to 10%. Uh, signal priority, we might want to give signal priority to a bus or perhaps a, a heavily loaded truck. That could be anywhere from four to 6%. Uh, and then what we often call harmonization between different uh, vehicles traveling down a roadway. Uh, depending on how it's implemented, that can be another five to 10% energy benefit. And then one of our favorites is extending the cruise control where we have cooperation between vehicles, where vehicles can travel in strings as they go down the roadway. That's been shown to be uh, energy and emissions reduction somewhere around 20 to 30%. So that's certainly one that gives you pretty significant uh, improvement. So take away from intelligent transportation systems is that all of these things are working towards improving safety, improving mobility, and there's many that are look focused in on the environmental aspect of reducing energy and reducing greenhouse gases. Several programs going on here in the US, Asia, as well as in Europe, and there's more and more of those sy uh, systems being implemented. Um, but as a whole, you know, each one of these is probably in the 5, 10, 15% savings, but if you implement many of them, you're gonna get a bigger uh, impact overall.